So if you want to follow along again or if you want to work on your own, it's completely up to you. I'm going to focus mainly on this side of the room until we get about halfway through and we'll pick up where we left off. What's that? <laughs> Don't go that way at all. This is just a small group. Oh, I did it again, guys. Here we go. Uh, there. To love the full screen. Uh, you guys go ahead and go to our website. Yep. And then up at the top, you should see one for webmail, just like you're going to go check your email. Yep, log in as yourself. classroom site, there it is, my site's done for me, boom, right, <coughs> select that, I want to call it my teacher website, scroll down, create, and it does take a little while, but in about two or three clicks you got a website, right? <laughs> Not exactly. What you get is something that looks like that. And that's probably not you. And those aren't your kids. A lot of mods. What's that? A lot of modification. You yeah. You change everything. Yeah. So you don't want to do that. Can you do any of these uh, websites with password protection? I don't know that for a fact. But you can share certain, choose to share certain things with the public uh -huh. and choose to keep certain things private okay. or between different individuals. All you right. guys have used Google Docs. Uh -huh. Same principles apply there. So let's go over the terminology here. This is called a template. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can use them, but they have information in there, which someone else in the last class said it actually takes about twice as long because you got to delete what's there and put your own stuff in. It may look cool at first, but it's not yours, and it's not it's not really helpful to you unless you're trying to learn, you know, the basics, or you haven't looked at a website before, which most people have. So basically, for the real insecure, I guess I'm not real sure yet. I'm still trying to figure that one out. So one of the things when we got to that sites tab was we could go to the browse sites, which will give us a listing by category of all the sites that have already been created here at USD 250. A lot of them end up getting dumped into uncategorized. 
because that means no one went to the trouble of putting them into a category when they created the site initially. But a lot of them you can see, they all have what they're about, administration, clubs, computers, education, football, math, lots of different things, okay? So, I don't know, we'll pick one, computers. There's Miss Wood's site. This is this group. This one was made today. Ruth made this one. We, we picked a theme, which is different than a template. A theme carries across all pages of the site so that it has some consistency. But it does a theme does not carry any content with it. So a theme and a template are two very distinct things. And the terminology is pretty important because you want to use the right terminology to ask the right questions and to, and to look for the right things, particularly if you're trying to do something you've never done before. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, history. Let's see what's under here. Robinson's Club. Okay. 2010. Uh, looks like, you know, you got the main site. It's got kind of a black template, or excuse me, theme look. And then we've got a sidebar here. We've got some material on the left to get an open up pages on the so right. So does your theme stay within fonts and certain graphics? You're right. And so and yep. so a, a theme covers the colors, the fonts, the color of the font, the style of the uh, link, the style of the text on the link. But not necessarily the page layout. It, yeah, it does. Actually, it, does do it, is, it does do some of the page layout. Uh, think of formatting as the term you want to use for the page. Kind of like you format a Word document. You can make two columns and do all that kind of stuff in this active area here. This, the rest of it is considered the theme. And then along this left-hand side, uh, you've got a couple of different sections in this particular site. She's got American government, AP government, etc. These are just some classes. Doesn't appear to be any material in there. And this is kind of about where a lot of people are in our district with Google Sites. The next step really is putting stuff in there. It's enough really for a lot of people just to get to this point, but what you'll find is it takes time. You have to be committed to put stuff on there and take an hour a week or whatever it is and just go do it and put your pictures in there, update your syllabus or whatever it is that you're trying to use this for, we put it in here. Uh, how much memory is allotted to this site? I'm not 100% sure, but they recently went from 7 gigs as the overall Google Sites, Google Docs, email, all that combined, 7 gigs, uh -huh. up to 10, 10 gigs now. And they've also increased it by adding this thing called Google Drive. I don't know if you guys have heard of that. Google Drive is kind of like Dropbox. Mm -hmm. If you use that, it's a file storage. It's kind of their take on Dropbox. So all of your stuff in Google counts towards that quota. So if you're going to have a whole bunch of pictures that you download in Picasa, or if you have a whole bunch of email that you never delete, or you have a whole bunch of Google Docs that people either send you or you're storing in there, it's all going to count towards that overall limit. Which, like I said, it was recently increased to 10 gigs. So it's going to be hard to fill that up, but it is possible. And there's options for purchasing more. So, so if we're going to do video, the best thing to do is be linked to like YouTube or exactly. something. Exactly. Link right. to so video. Them in the site. Right. And we're going to get into that in the next half of this session because that's kind of where these guys are. They want to put some more stuff in there, calendars and all that. Which, all that, you know, the more you have, the more it counts for your old world. So, Jack, you want to see if, what's your number at the top there? Do you have a number on that computer? Does it? Does it? Yeah, no, this is 12. Yep, it is. I'm going to put you on camera here, and we're going to watch you go through this initial setup. And I'll guide you. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, that's, that's mine. Is. Oh, okay. Mine's nine. So she's at the same spot. 
Terry, would you mind going ahead and walking through it then? Okay, what should I do? Okay, uh, we, we're selecting a blank template. Now, the name of your site is a human readable form. And what I mean by that is, on the site location here, that's a URL. That's what the computer understands as your site location. Uh, what do we want to call this kind of demo site we're setting up for you? Do you have an idea? Are we setting up like my site? Mm -hmm. Or it will just be um, history with no, Mrs. Blanchard, okay. be history with Mrs. Blanchard, I guess. All right. Do you have a website already? No, I do not. Okay. Go ahead. So it needs to go here? Yep. Up top. Next one up. Next one up. Yep. That's a great name, by the way. Called the old gal, Mrs. Blanchard. What? Old gal or something like that. History. Old? Are you calling me old? Oh, old. Oh, oh. I want you to know oh, I had Dallas oh, in the fifth grade. Oh, oh, I know. Oh, no. about and gal. Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> Together. All right, so what happened here, when you typed this, yeah. it uh, actually auto filled something down here under this site location. But that site location is kind of weird. It's it's real long, and I don't want to say that. I want to I want to pick something that everybody else uses. So I want to delete that out, and I want to change it to uh, your username, like your email address username. Okay. Now we have a standard way to get to everybody's site. Jay Weaver. Uh, sorry. L Downing. L Downing, right? Huh? Okay, so that got you to there. Now select a theme. What we've been choosing is, we, we kind of want to go for this purple look. Oh, yeah, I guess, did you guys sign the second time around? I just signed the second time. I didn't sign the Okay, so let's send that around. Sorry about that. Uh, go ahead and keep scrolling down here. There's so one to stay uniform as far as I think it would be good to keep a common purple theme at this point anyway. Should be close. There it is right there. This solitude and violet was one that we had picked in the last okay. class. And go ahead and scroll down and see more. Now this is what most people forget about. Right here under the more options. Yeah. Click on it. Yep. Scroll down and we go to site category. Remember where we saw that big old spread of different tags and biology and math and all this stuff? Uh, what did we decide on, guys? Was it like uh, teacher sites? Teacher sites, comma, comma PCMS, PCMS, comma, and then like you put eighth grade history. Teacher sites, what? Comma, space, PCMS, comma. Uh, history. And uh, pop down there to site description. <coughs> and I want to show you guys something. Have you ever done a Google search? Raise your hand. <laughs> Alright, there's Google today. So I want to find something about history. I type it in, I search for a term, I get a result, which is also the link. But below the link, we see a URL, which is a string of letters. And then we also have this bit right here called description. So if you want your website to look like that, you have to have all those elements, which is what we're setting up. So you see what a description is kind of like this short sentence about what this page is about. Okay? So I'm going to flip back to you. And you want to type that You see it, Jack? Okay, what do you want me to type? <laughs> I'm down to the bottom corner. <coughs> okay. Very good. Thank you. Uh, a description about what this site is going to be. This is my, this is Terry Blancho's history, blah, blah, blah. Okay. 
Great History site or website. And let's take it another step further. About American history or there you go. Back. Okay. Something else I said too. Stuff. Yeah. Well, something else I said too is to think about this as if you're searching for this on online. You need to include some material about where you're located. It's for Kansas. What's specific about your website that sets you apart on a global scene? So you might want to go ahead and uh, back, not backspace, but arrow back, and add in there somewhere something about Pittsburgh Middle School. tells me kind of exactly what this is. Are you happy with that? Yeah. Go up there at the top and create. Oh, wait a minute, about America, not classroom history. Okay. Now what? Up the top, hit create. Say yes to that. show all the different classes. So the teacher. I guess it is just teacher so you can call it Jack Weaver. That's a human readable thing. Okay. So Jack Weaver space, whatever you want. We work. Uh, put in a uh, art education class. Or is that is that in, it's just 3D, right? Okay, and then that includes ceramics okay. under that umbrella. Yeah. The description said this is, That's awesome. This yeah. is Terry but we do want to change that just to Jay Weaver. Because when we, when we email these to Brett, when we're all done with this, it's 
it'll be a real simplified uh, short name of your name. You guys now have a side. So when that's done creating for you guys, it'll look something like this. Again, we've got two main sections that we want to focus on. This left hand side, which is called the sidebar, which is your navigation and how you find things on the site. And then you've got your home page and all of your all of these when you click on them is gonna is gonna come up right here. So one of the first things uh, that we created in the other class was this file cabinet, which we found pretty useful because if you have things like a syllabus or something you hand out in class that you always want to continue to uh, reference, you say you have kids coming into a lab or in, in your mini lab and you always have them do this particular thing, they can just click on it, open it up, fill it out, print it. You know, uh, gives them or gives you a real easy way to distribute material. So, did any of you bring any material by chance? Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just show you real quick how to do that. This is another major area you want to focus on when you get to your site. Uh, these tools up here, this one's edit. This is create new page and more. And uh, as Larry saw, there's a whole lot of stuff here that you can do. So, first thing we're going to do is look at edit. And that's what you got to do. That's people, a lot of people get confused, like, how come I can't do anything? How come I can't change this? Well, you got to go to edit first. That's what the whole thing So now you can change anything you want about it. I'm not sure how that's going to look that long like that. I'm going to try it. Okay. Uh, the, the way that you create something like this is just like you would create any new page. You go up to new page. You got to name it. Now think of it, you got a site, but underneath your site, you've got pages. Each page is a member of your site. So what do we want to call this page? Let's call it my syllabus. Okay. And it's not going to be just a typical old web page. We're going to turn it into a file cabinet, which means that we can put documents in there in their original format, not as a web page but as documents stored in your web page. File share. Yeah. So where do we want it? Just leave all that the same. Hit create. So I'm going to give you guys a chance to do this, but I'm going to show you one more step. Now, when you've created this section, you can then add files to it. You can add links to it. A lot of people would create a section like this and put links to uh, art history class or you know, uh, anything, or anything online. You know, maybe you go to a couple different websites that in your classes. List them all out. And then they're always on this page. You can direct the kids there. They click on one, and you can kind of direct them without having to have any setup on their computers. When you add a link, can you write a description? Yes, and that's, that's key. It's not just the link. Doing it in this fashion gives you the option to create what you want to call it, and then when they click on it, the action of going to that particular site. So the first thing we're going to do, though, before we add links, is we're going to add a file. This is my syllabus, because I want to post this on my website. Parents, everybody, students, the world, everyone around can see it. So, you know, be aware of that fact. Uh, so here's my class syllabus for chemistry. Uploads. Boom, there it is. Now, you're wondering, what good is it? Well, they could download it, like we talked about, so that they could work off of that file, or they could just view it right there. Say you have some material that you just want to show them right in front of their face, and there's nothing in this file, so that's all right. I forgot there's nothing in it. 
<laughs> so now we're going to do the hands-on part of this. Terry, you want me to? I'm still spinning over here. Really? Yeah, we did. Cancel it. It will refresh and show your website stuff. It will? It, yeah, I did that over here. Cancel. Oh, there it is. There it is. Larry, you want to walk through that and have these guys watch? And what do I do? Oh, um. So if I'm creating the file cabinet. What do you call the file? Just file cabinet. If you want to, I thought that was a pretty good okay. game. I mean, unless you can think no, of a lot of people say maybe my collection of links or whatever it's going to be. What, what's your function for? What do you think you might use it for? Well, I, I would uh, probably put syllabus. Okay. So you can say my syllabus. Okay. And you can create multiple ones. So you may have one file cabinet for your uh, syllabus and different ones that you teach, and one file cabinet for assignments. Okay. And yeah, you selected the file cabinet, so now it should come up. Uh, actually, all you got to do is add a file. Yep. And you need to go to just new up here. How many people use the Google Calendar? Okay. Do you just look at like one calendar set up? I just now try to set another Perfect. That's good. Let's all go do that. Let's do one new calendar. I don't know if I do. Yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah. The, yeah, the cool thing about it is, I mean, since this is all tied together, it's real easy to integrate these things. And then that includes videos, pictures, or calendar, which is what we're going to look at first. So, this is kind of what mine looks like, but this isn't, I, I mean, I've got holidays on there, which I think most of you guys should by default, too. Um, this is just by clicking on calendar. And this is, uh, Today is highlighted. This is week view. I actually usually prefer month view. A lot of times I like to look at that. Now I have all my coworkers in technology, uh, their calendars on here too. So I could technically only probably pull from my calendars. And rather than take one, like Jerry said, We'll probably want to create one. And I think I'm going to change the format a little bit. <laughs> Just click on calendar. Yeah. Take it here. Be careful. Um, the tool. Instead of doing the eyes up here, thing, let's just follow along and probably get faster. <coughs> so is everybody kind of at this phase? Get, oh gosh, let me go back. Go to calendar and then go up here to the little gear. And then calendar settings. And then you're going to get just this basic page, which we don't want to change anything here. But then calendars tab. And these are ones I actually created my own in the staff development. So everybody click on create new. I'm going to call mine website calendar. I'm not going to have multiple ones though. I'm just going to have one. You guys might want to create one for each thing that you're wanting to show events of. Again, here we go with the description.
Somebody did. I can't imagine how great that was. I'm sure they're not in this classroom right now. About 60, 70 words per minute. I got one going. sure this location thing is all that important. I've never found an actual use for that. But I'll just say technology office or you put your department or something like that. Okay, this is important here and this is why we want to make that distinction between what's a personal calendar and what's a public calendar. Because even on your guys' phones, I don't know if any of you link to your Google account or not, you're probably getting notifications and stuff like that, possibly. Um, anytime you do stuff under that account, it's going to default to your calendar, your private calendar. You, like we talked about the doctor's appointments and all that sort of stuff, you don't want that going on your website calendar. And again, that's the purpose for creating this as a separate calendar. So as long as you're aware of what you're doing here, when you create this calendar and put events on it for public display, um, then you're... Uh, You'll, you'll be clear on what you're doing, I guess. Uh, share, you want to check the box for share this calendar with others. Make this calendar public, and the rest of it's always default. Maybe you guys have shared probably calendars with them between departments and stuff. Are you checked on share also? No, it's share just paint. Yeah, it automatically filled that yeah. second one. Yeah, you're in the right spot. So I everybody can click create and hold your hand up if you don't get this far with yes. Yeah, that's the best way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
how do your calendars tab? I want to be on the website, right? Yep, yep. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and create some events in the calendar when you have it selected. You have to select it on the left hand side there, or you're going to create it in other places. How do we get it into our. Yeah. I think yeah, I think you guys are, are wanting to get into this next step here. Uh, obviously, you've got these things on the left hand side. I've got, like I talked about, these other calendars. Uh, if you click on them, so if I don't click that, it goes on my go to the first. Yeah. Yeah. See how we have all these red ones? Those are Noah's. I don't want to look at the calendar. I've got both. My red one is my last All right, so on the 18th, we can be in the town. I just step up May. I go down here. I'm just doing that. The oh, thing. calendar sound show. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there's some of those things. Like you can mark it. You can mark it and they're like colors. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it yeah. yeah. automatically. It's not like there's. Um, but you can do that all days. By default, you can see different ones. Different. You can exclude different ones. Oh, yeah. Big Star Johnson. I really like it with the top. Like, you get every Secretary's Day or every little. It's Peanut Butter Day or something like that. That's the best part. No, I haven't. No, just go ahead and go back to your calendar right mm -hmm. here. We're going to understand how to book these events. And make show webinars. Oh, she's here. 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 Oh, she's
that's an all day event. I didn't change the time, anything like that. It's uh, dark blue, which on this appears to be just by default on my regular calendar. So that's not good, that's not gonna show up. So let's click on that again. Let's edit it. And where do I want that calendar to be? I want that on my website calendar. Calendar event. So even though I created it on my calendar, I can move it over there. Now, the easy way to get around that, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you can turn these off. And I can certainly turn off other people's, like the holidays is gone. See, the yellow holidays went away. Dan's, kind of this green color. And this one. So now I've cleaned all that off. I've still got Sarah's purple one on here. I'm gonna get rid of that. Now I got a clean slate, go home on my website calendar. Does that make sense? There's different layers for different things you got going on. Website calendar just happens to be one of those things. And if you don't want to see it, and but you want your regular calendar on, you turn it off and on like layers. Is that pretty clear for everybody? I don't know how much stuff you've got on there, but it's kind of got a little bit different count. I don't think I said anything. Yeah, yours is on Virginia's phone, so you want to scroll down and change the event to be on your account for music events. And then you want to call it something like recital or whatever. Well, no, can I just not call it calendar for music events? This is an actual event on that music account. So this will be a thing on whatever day you select oh, 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 today. Oh, well, you just go sample.
so there it is, Chemistry 1 class, it's a page. Now, here's where we get into this. Uh, here is some text about my class, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I want some content in here that I'll update in my calendar, but I'll never have to change on my site. It's if I put it in my calendar, it'll show right up here. So to do that, we want to insert a calendar. I've already set it up, so this, this part's easy. What do we want? Website calendar. Okay. Select it. Now, so a lot of you guys have already put one in there, and it's the full month. That's cool. Uh, I think what would be kind of neat would just be to see a week or maybe an agenda view, because I think that's probably more relevant and it actually makes it look like you're updating the website all the time, but you're really not. <laughs> <laughs> let me, let me, let's see, 600, that seems a little large. Let's go to three. Okay. So that was the week. This should be included. I'm just going to save this. Yeah, there it is. So, Let's go back to well, home, for example. And then there's my Chemistry 1 class page. And then here's some text about my class, like I told you. And then here's the website calendar. That could just, I could have named that Chemistry 1 calendar if I knew what I was doing. And then here's the agenda. Go home was the only thing on that week. Now if I look again at the month view, uh, there actually should be another event in here. And I may have screwed that up. Yeah. That training session is on the wrong calendar. See, it's on Dallas. I need to change that to website calendar. And it's a lighter shade of blue. Go back over here to chemistry class. And you can select several calendars within this one right and layer it in there? I think so. I tried, well, I tried to click like U.S. holidays, let's just say. Yeah. And my calendar that I made. But your, but your U.S. But calendar is not public. You can go um, back into settings. Okay. I believe. You have to make that public in order to. Yeah. So and you wouldn't want to do that like with your own calendar, but the holidays yeah. is fine. Then you don't have to go through and edit holidays and stuff. Yeah. And let's think about this too. What if you guys had um, what if you guys had sorry, I'm just walking around I guess. Proximity. What's that? It's good proximity. It's a teaching thing. Oh. <laughs> right. hey, he has really good like he's real worried about that. <laughs> I'm not a teacher. <laughs> he had a really good syllabus. Uh, oh, okay. So, yeah, it's to, I don't know what was I going with that. See, you just yeah, you so just rattled me. What's that called? Huh? What's that called? What's that? What's that? that? Derailment. Take it away. Take it away. <laughs> the office. <laughs> Parents will pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Go back up here, I'll probably remember that. Right? You guys wanted to show the uh, US calendar on here. I don't know where I was going with that. Anyway, <laughs> let's see if I can do that. Oh, here's where it was. So you've got a calendar of events that you are shared that is shared by your secretary already, right? So let's not reinvent the wheel here, let's add that in. Uh, in my case, that's probably more like the staff development calendar. What you do then? <laughs> so here's some cool stuff that's going on in my building. Uh, looks like Becky Bedini on Thursday the 10th, something. And then that Route 66 Club is going to be there on Wednesday, and Success for All on a Monday the 21st of this month. So uh, this is our staff development calendar. It's more or less public anyway. Let's see if I can insert that in a new page. Let's call this one my building calendar. I want this one to look more like a month because not a whole lot of things go on building-wide, at least at the Staff Development Center. 
that you know a week would not be very ideal, and that may be the same in like your conference rooms or something. I don't know what your what your building calendar probably looks pretty pretty intense, but so we're we're going to go to there's my building calendar, and within that, these are some things happening in our building this month, and I, I want it to look like a month. So I'm going to insert a calendar, the staff development calendar, or Pittsburgh Middle School calendar, or whatever. Select. Uh, we're going to leave it completely default, month view, 600 pixels. Save it. There it is. That's what I wanted. I wanted a month view on my building stuff, and then my little class, Chemistry class one, I've got my little <coughs> upcoming week type deal. So there's just two different formats. Where did you, you guys get the US holidays calendar from? It go to add calendar and it's one of the ones that comes up. It probably is something you have to add, I don't know. At one time I think it was included with the calendars. We'll go up to insert. Video from YouTube. Gives you the link, look kind of familiar here, go out on the internet, find the video you want. Sometimes it's easier if you just click on videos. There's one on YouTube. How to use the import calendar feature. Of course, there's an advertisement. Not responsible for the content. All right, so I can skip that. Now, let's see. It's going to start. It's talking about Google, blah, blah, blah. Okay, this is cool. This is what I want to use. So. Highlight the URL at the top, copy it, come back over here to where we're going to insert, paste it, uh, what do you want to call it, I don't call it YouTube video, I'm going to say Google Sites video about importing calendars, save it. Save it. There it is. You now have video on your site. Now, you realize that's someone else's video. I'm not going to teach you in this class how to shoot your own video, but when you do that, the next step is, much like we did the calendar, you need to have it established somewhere. That video that you have is on your computer. You shot something in your class, or like you do the uh, tutorial guide lessons. Uh, they're on your computer. So you need to go into YouTube, upload them. Okay? Have you done this? Yes. Oh, okay. I've done it before, but I. <laughs> now, once they're in YouTube, they'll get a link just like we saw. That URL is your key. Once you have that URL, it can then be put into your site. Any questions on that? Deal? You, I want to make sure you guys get around to doing that. Here. Got it. Okay. Got it, Terry? Yeah. I'm not going to do something else. What? <laughs> it's supposed to show up when it comes on on your website. Hey, Dallas, I have a question on all, right. on all of these. How do you, if you don't want them oh, that's to good. be able Contact to put comments, yeah, 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 if you don't want them to be able to oh, put comments on it, how do you get that out? Okay. Or just, that I don't know. Uh, there probably is oh, under that under that under site yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. Terry, if you go up to, scroll to the top. You go up to more and you go to page settings. I do that for each page, but like, like I took like if I didn't need attachments, I took off attachments. Very good. Yeah. And took off